Welcome to Red October. This is the Pick 6 Podcast. With the Omaha World Herald, I'm Evan Bland with Sam McEwen, Tom Chattel. Guys, we have flipped the calendar. It is October. You wouldn't know it. It's going to be close to 100 degrees this weekend in Lincoln. Um, <laughs> well, Nebraska is ready to try to go 5-1. and one. They have Rutgers coming to town. What... Uh, I guess, what do you guys kind of make of of almost halfway through Nebraska's season? Maybe just some of the progress that they've made. Uh, Tom, I I think about what you said earlier this week. You felt like Nebraska played better in the first three games than they played in the last two. Yeah, and I'm sure people say, well, well, duh, they played an easier schedule. But I I would submit that uh, that Colorado's right now better than the uh, the Boilers are. So – um, and it really had nothing to do with the opponent. I didn't. Nebraska just played a, a lot cleaner. Uh, the penalties were way down, other than that uh, goofy quarter against Colorado. Um, and, and I, <laughs> you know, guys, I've watched. We've all watched thousands of football games in our lives. And do you ever pay attention to the the deep snap on a field goal or extra point? Did you ever just look at it and go, I wonder how that happened? No, it's automatic. It doesn't even, we don't even pay attention to that. And all of a sudden we are. And it's just it's just weird. The first three games, that was not an issue. I mean, I don't they just kicked they, you know, it, 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 if they missed a field goal, it wasn't because of the snap. So I don't know um where that came from. But yeah, I thought they played better coming out of the gate. Um I thought I guess Colorado. There was a lot more purpose. There, there, there was a lot more focus. Um, you know, where did that go? Did they all of a sudden beat Colorado and become ranked and say, well, we've arrived. That's it. We're here. Because um, they ain't there. And uh, they got a long way to go. But there is progress. And uh, this is the kind of game that will tell you where this season's going to go. Uh, what direction, I think. And um, it's the kind of game that is going to measure progress because Rutgers is a lot like Iowa. They are who they are. They don't make mistakes. They're very tough. Um, And they will beat you if if you, if you let them, if you, if you, you beat yourself. So, um, you know, what, what do we, what kind of team do we have here this year in Nebraska? I think we'll find out Saturday. As I look at the the first six games of the season, I think, you know, any objective observer could say, look at it and say, these are six games Nebraska could win. I think the way that I looked at it was that one of those games was going to be a hard lesson. When were they going to learn that lesson, right? And prior to the season, I kind of thought this would be the game, the one coming up against Rutgers where Nebraska might learn the hard lesson that they then take with them toward the, the second half of the schedule. They've already learned it. So they played Illinois. They learned a hard lesson, a couple of hard lessons in that game. And this game is about whether they learned anything from that. Um, You know, the Purdue game answered a few of those questions, but I think this game will answer more of them because Rutgers is a better football team than Purdue and may well be a better football team than Illinois. And just what Tom said, Rutgers knows who it is. It's not going to beat itself easily. Rutgers is not going to blow Nebraska out of the stadium. They're not coming in here to to get up twenty one nothing early. They're gonna they're gonna bleed clock. They're gonna they're gonna run the Minnesota offense that we've seen for so many years inside zone, inside zone, outside zone, RPO. Uh, they do the same things over and over, and they and their hope is by the end of the game you're just so tired of defending that that you don't defend it very well. And on the flip side of the coin, it's just like Tom said, Rutgers is a lot like Iowa. They're gonna rush four. They occasionally rush five, but not very often. They rush four. They play coverage. They play quarters coverage. You got to beat it. It's really that simple. Uh, so this is a this is a, this is a litmus test game for Nebraska. If they can pass it and they can win this game, I think that's a nice feather in their cap. If they can't, then you know you have natural questions about the second half of the season and what Nebraska can do in the second half based on losing Saturday's game. So w- one thing I'm curious your guys' take on from the Purdue game. So 0-0 at the half, ugly game. Tom, you mentioned the special team struggles. 
do you guys, and, and Matt Rule would say he does, do you consider the Purdue win with the fact that they won the game in the second half, is that a growth moment? Does that represent progress for Nebraska because they pulled it out on the road in a, in a close situation in the second half? Or do you kind of view it, uh, you know, not all that different than Colorado? I mean, they were both 28 to 10 scores. Nebraska had a, the hot first half against Colorado and then just sort of coasted in the second half. This was the opposite. Is this growth or is this just kind of a different path to the same result? Well, one of the rules of, of I guess, progress or a, a program that's developing is every game doesn't mean something. I mean, and it, in the moment, it's just another, I mean, you win and that, that's what that means. And, um, you know, you find out what everything means at the end of the year. I mean, is what did they do? You know, did they grow on Saturday? Well, we'll find out this Saturday. You know, I want to take a step back. I mean, it, every week is just it, you feel like it's it's all growth, and um, and hopefully you you grow from the losses too. But and then you kind of add it up at the end. So, um. But I, I do think this is a big one because it's it, well, there's a lot different between being five and one, and 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 then uh, four and two off a second home loss with, yep. with a bye week to think about it, and then you're going to Indiana and you're going to Ohio State. You're going to be probably four and four. So it's a big. This is a big one for that reason. Um, yeah, I, did they grow? I think it I, just on on the uh, surface, I say yes. Because they did something they hadn't been able to do, which is close the game. Um, and uh, so in the halftime, I came. I was thinking, you know, this <laughs> this might be this might not be good. So the way they did it, that the the talent took over. Um, there was a lot to clean up, but they they clearly have offensive playmakers that should be able to help them on their way the rest of the year. But, um, but yeah, did they, did they, uh, did they grow again? We'll, we'll know more Saturday night. Purdue could very well end up one and 11. They fired their offensive coordinator. I think Ryan Walters personally is on the hot seat. The Purdue beat writers told me that he wasn't, but then of course he fired Graham Harrell and that tells you something. Yeah. It's like he knows something's got to change before the end of the season. They can't just go through it. So what I would say is that that game, um, historically, as I look back at other opportunities where Nebraska's went on the road and won a game, did it mean anything to beat Maryland 54-7? No. Did it mean anything to go out and beat Illinois 28-6 in 2017? No. I, I don't want to put too much stock on that game. I think we can certainly appreciate that Matt Rule builds a lot of connections and does that with his team and is trying to instill belief. Uh, but, you know, we have a historical record. And I think what I would rather see is is the game on, on Saturday. Uh, that will represent, to me, more of a question of growth than this one. Uh, I think I think it, the Rutgers game is is very important for all the reasons Tom just said. Four and two is different than five and one. Way different. And, five, and four and two off two home losses going into a bye week is very different. You want to talk about things getting loud? It'll get loud over the bye week if Nebraska doesn't win. It's an important game, and Nebraska can win it. It, it. You know, it'd be different if it were Iowa coming in here. I think there's – Iowa's a uh, team that's kind of inside Nebraska's head. Um, but this is a team they can beat, and and they've never lost to Rutgers, ever. So this isn't a team that's going to come in here with some sort of, woo over Nebraska. That's not going to happen. Nebraska doesn't fear this team. There's, there's no reason they're going to have the home field advantage. They're going to have a hundred degree heat on the field. You know, this is a game you go win, and we'll see if Matt Rule's team is 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 ready to do that. I think they've got certainly the quarterback to do it. Uh, he's he's ready to go. Are the other components there? And are they calling a football game? And this is something that I think you can kind of look back at Purdue and just check your mind going forward. Are they calling a football game that? that that that's commensurate with understanding that they have the worst field goal unit in, in the country. And maybe it'll get magically better, but you got to call a football game that way. So you've got to, you've got to have an understanding of, you know, it's first and 10 at the 40 yard line. 
you know, you probably need to get inside the 20 before you're even thinking field goal, and you better be prepared to call some fourth downs in this game. Um, you've got to try to stay on the football field against Rutgers. You you give them the ball over and over, and sooner or later they're going to have a 12-play, 11-minute drive on you, and your defense is going to be, you know, it's going to have its its soul against the wall because it's so hot outside. So Nebraska's got to play this game with that in mind, complimentary football. And it's been – it has not always been easy for teams. Scott Fr- I watched Scott Frost get out coached in this style over and over, and we kind of watched Matt Rule get out coached in it last year against Iowa. And it's and he's even admitted it. So like I'm not trying to yes. dog him or anything. He's admitted as much. So here we have another game where it's like, okay, you got to call a football game that you don't need to be ashamed of winning 14 to 10 if that's what it is. Um, but you need to control the football game. And I think that's the key is can Nebraska control the game, regardless of what the score is, does it feel like Nebraska's controlling field position and moving, moving the chess pieces so that they eventually get a checkmate in the fourth quarter? Yeah, I mean, you, and you look at the numbers that would <clears throat> that would confirm what you're saying, Sam. I mean, Purdue's not an ex- I'm sorry, Rutgers is not an explosive offense. Nebraska, you look at some of the explosive plays allowed at 20 plus yards. Uh, really, only Texas is better among teams that have played five games to this point. So it's not about getting gashed; it's about getting bled out. Um, and, and you do it in 100 degree weather. That, that could definitely factor in and i think the the fact that it's going to be gusting winds i, I don't know that uh, anything's not four down territory for nebraska's offense as they move in that'll be something to watch we talked before the season too about this four game stretch that nebraska is in the middle of it started with illinois purdue now rutgers and indiana has it taken on a different tone to you guys a month into the season, given that both of those teams are undefeated and, and and Indiana almost certainly will be when they play Nebraska in a week. Is it, do you still view this swing kind of series of games the same or has it changed because of what Rutgers and Indiana have shown? I expected Rutgers to be undefeated at this point. So that's not surprising to me. Um, I got the impression talking to certain people that Indiana was going to be better than we had originally projected. I think I had Indiana in our preseason thing going seven and five or six and six. It's hard to tell exactly how good they are. I mean, the teams they've played, I mean, UCLA verifiably, certifiably is the weakest team in the league. And I feel for those guys. You can tell they're trying, but that's a complete rebuild. I think Purdue is actually slightly better, even though I had Purdue last in the Big Ten rankings this week. So Indiana went out and beat a team that's not anywhere near uh, Big Ten ready. And so um, we don't know exactly how good Indiana is yet, but yeah, absolutely. This is an opportunity for Nebraska to actually put some good wins on the board uh, to go and beat Indiana after a bye week. Indiana will have a bye week as well would be impressive because Indiana is probably going to be six and oh. So you're not going to, you're not going to turn that down. Uh, so it'd be a great opportunity for Nebraska to do something that uh, it hasn't done in a while. Yeah. Be a ranked team. So uh, no, I mean, I think I actually, can be honest, I think Nebraska's got a better opportunity than it did it before the before the season. This whole like, man, we really hope that these teams are all terrible so that you can win enough of them to get to a bowl game. I I get all that, but but Nebraska just needs to be able to go out, as Rule has said, and compete against good teams and beat them. These Big Ten teams are all in a giant jumble. There's about ten of them that are all sort of globbed together. You've got a couple at the top: Oregon, Ohio State, Penn State. You've got USC and Michigan. You got the big glob. And then at the bottom of the glob, you got, I mean, USC and UCLA and Purdue are, are, you know, really struggling. But there's just a big glob in the middle, and Nebraska's in the glob. And see, it's, it's it's either going to be eight wins in the glob or it's going to be six wins in the glob. I mean, it, Nebraska can decide that. It can beat any of the teams in the glob. And then it's going to go outside of the glob for a minute to play Ohio State. And that's that's their season, you know, <laughs> like they they can figure it out. And they have a chance to to do well this year and and make some progress. I think the other thing that's been interesting to watch has been like this idea that, okay, so Nebraska loses to Illinois, Sam, you mentioned it it kind of felt like they were going to have to learn a hard lesson at some point, but a lesson like that in say the past four or five years feels like it would have led into a tailspin or it kind of snowballed negatively. And I, I don't get that sense that like that's happening with this team. Like, are we seeing 
a team that could legitimately be getting better as the season goes on? Because it really does seem like the last five or six, seven years has been Nebraska gets into a big game against whomever, Wisconsin, Ohio State. They lose it, and they just kind of play out the string at that point. Is this team still building momentum, and how different is that vibe from what we've seen around here lately? Yeah, I think it's still too early to say. I mean, we're right in the middle of it. We're early October. Um, you know, they. Uh, I just, I, I, I need to see more. I'm, I, I, I want to see a team that doesn't have those false starts um, in, in an environment that was not really hostile. Um, I, I want to see the the special teams get cleaned up. I mean, if they have. Uh, if they have the the kind of team that played the first three games, especially the Colorado game, that, that's a team I think will be in every game, uh, even Ohio State. Um, if, you know, if if you know, run the ball, uh, clean up penalties, and 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 do, and do something good on special teams. Yeah, I think that, that that's a team I think will do well all year, um, but. I it's still choppy. It's we're not there yet. It's you know it's um it's frustrating for a Husker fan because you but you you know by the way this team started that that you were beyond some things uh, that that maybe those things were had been cleaned up and were gone and um, you know the last couple of weeks have, have kind of been a, a step back in that in that way. So um, yeah, I I I think I momentum. Is going to come hard every week. It's going to be. It's going to be. Uh, um, but if they can play well this week, and, and, and get a lot of things cleaned up, um, the, the Indiana game is going to be fun because uh, you're, you're right. Indiana has not played a great schedule. I'm not saying Nebraska is great, but but that that's that that that, that, that I can be a lot. Of, it'll, it'll be a shootout too. Indiana doesn't play a lot of defense, so. Um, that'll be a shootout probably. So, um, and you know, Nebraska's got the, the weapons to get in a shootout. So, um, but they got to get through this week and, um, you know, the, you know, this week could be a real grind. I'm not sure the Indiana game will be a grind. This one will be a grind. So the, they've, they've, they've got to show that they can win this kind of game. Growth is as growth does. That'd be what I would say is that, um, Nebraska's growth is going to be measured by wins to some degree. I mean, I think I think we've seen the games get tighter. So, you know, the embarrassing games that Nebraska had in in good whole portions of 22, uh, and then, you know, the one game in 23, Nebraska's found a way to to tighten those games. And I don't think we're talking about, you know, the 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 disasters of 2017 or anything like that. I think where it's at now is you've got a, you got a team coming into town. It's going to be a hundred degrees. They're on the hot sideline, and you have a crowd. You have the better quarterback. You probably have the better offensive and defensive line. Go win a game. That's that's what it is. And Rutgers is going to have a plan. It's a good plan. They know who they are. Their defensive line isn't huge. It's not. They're going to let you run the football. They've given up 145 yards to every single team they've played, and that includes Akron and Howard. And Rutgers does not care if it gives up 145 yards. They're comfortable with that. They'll let you move the ball between the 20s. What they want to do, though, is prevent big plays and then prevent you from scoring touchdowns. And so how much will Nebraska commit to running the football? How much will Nebraska execute in the red zones? One of those, you know, it's a litmus test game. It's kind of like when Pat Fitzgerald had a good Northwestern team. It's kind of what these teams are. And Fitzgerald had a sometimes had a better quarterback. Clayton Thorson was probably a better quarterback than Ethan Kelly at Mass. But you know, Northwestern is is like a litmus test. It it reveals what a team is based on how they play. And there's a reason why Rutgers, even though they've been good at times over the last four or five years, has not beaten Penn State, Michigan, or Ohio State and any gotten even close anywhere during that time. It's because they're not good enough to beat those teams. But Rutgers has also beaten teams that it's not as good as, theoretically, because those teams make mistakes. And that's where Washington was last week when they lost 21-18. Washington's got some football players. And then I think I'm picking Washington to beat Michigan this week in Seattle. 
but they weren't they they weren't composed enough to beat to beat Rutgers at home. Now Nebraska has an opportunity to do it differently, and we'll see if they do. I you know it's like the line from the Social Network: if your clients were the inventors of Facebook, they would have invented Facebook. <laughs> we'll see what Nebraska does. If they if they're gonna if they're mm-hmm. that team, then they'll win the game. They're a seven point favorite. They should win the game. How would you guys handle kicking field goals this weekend? Again, 100 degrees on the field. Winds are gusting. Could be in excess of 30 miles an hour. You're In all likelihood, you're still with John Hole, with Tristan Alvano recovering. He maybe comes back after the bye week. And you've switched long snappers in game. Do you give that group a chance early? Or do you guys think Nebraska's better course is just to assume you get inside the 40, it's four down territory, and – game plan accordingly oh boy yeah that's why i don't gamble I don't, um mm-hmm. the um you know rule says they, they get it done in practice and they can't do it in the games um <laughs> that's a little maddening um i, I think you, you maybe try once i mean you just kind of see where the game is if if it's a situation um where it's a long field goal you might be better off. I mean, in this game, especially, you know, maybe a punt and 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 try to and try to, you know, maybe uh, I got, I got, I got Rutgers pinned inside the five or ten, and and and, and if it's going to be a a field position game, play play it, you know. But um, I'm not sure gambling is this. You know, this is the game to gamble a lot because Rutgers. If you if you choose poorly, <laughs> Rutgers will take advantage of it. Um, you know, I wouldn't give them all any hope, uh, you know, necessarily. So, I would, you know, depending on where the ball is, I, if it's inside the thirty, you know, then you probably go for it. But if it's if it's outside the thirty five or so, I'd, I'd punt. Um, I would not give Rutgers any hope. Um, now maybe, you know, Satterfield has a play drawn up he thinks is going to work and he's got the quarterback to make it work and oh, yeah all right go for it but um i'd be very careful um uh, messing around with, 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 with the scarlet knights this week because um I, I i just i wouldn't give them anything yeah i'm with that i think it takes a whole holistic way of looking at it so when you get to the 35 yard line and it's first and 10, or it was the 34 for Purdue last week, maybe you don't throw the ball three times in a row and risk three incompletions. Maybe you run it a couple of times, you get to third and six, third and five, you throw the football, then you got a manageable fourth down. Anything fourth and longer than 10 is somewhat unmanageable unless you're in two minute and the, t- the defense is gassed or whatever. So I think. What I would do is, you know, you've got to create a whole plan around what you're going to do if you've got first and 10 from the 25. And I did not third down, first down. What are you going to do when it's first and 10 from the 25? What are you going to do when it's first and 10 from the 35? If you're first and 10 from the 45, you're taking shots. Why? Because you want to get inside the 20 so you can guarantee yourself points. Um, You want to try to get, you want to, you want chunk plays from if you're starting from the 50 to the plus 40 or whatever. So there's things that you things I'm sure they're going to think about as they scheme up and they think about what they want to do holistically. Then when they get there, they you know they'll have to make the hard decisions. I'd say anything inside of uh, 20, 20 yards. So like any any field goal that would be uh, you know 38 yards or shorter, you gotta you gotta at least sense what's going on with the wind, and then you've got to maybe take a kick. Um, of course, time and score matter too. So maybe if it's fourth and four and you're down by six, then you go for it at the 14, you know, kick a field goal. But I'm sure it's just a holistic plan and we'll, we'll see what they do. It's, it's actually, Evan, it's been hard to get an exact handle on the way that rule wants to manage every situation. It feels like at times he, he goes with what the book would say. And then at times he takes a gamble. So I think he plays and, and Satterfield plays on gut feel a little bit. And sometimes that works and sometimes it backfires. I think the, the the thing you want to avoid if you're Nebraska is to have that first kick be in a critical situation late in the game. Like, I think you want, ideally, I mean, ideally you're just scoring touchdowns, but if, if you can get a kick in early, 
I'd want to know kind of where their head is. I mean, that was pretty obvious against Purdue that they were inside themselves way too much. What does that, what does that look like? And like, if, if the first snap or the first kicks way off I, to, to me, then I'm doing, yeah, I'm punting or I'm going for it every time into the opponents, into the opponent's territory. But I guess we'll see. That's a tough situation to be in. Um, I don't know. It, it, it's, 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 how do you, how do you make those decisions? Like you, you go by the book, but your guys can't execute the book that you want to go by. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, any other kind of matchup based things that stand out to you guys about this game? I mean, Rutgers kind of has that intangible quality a little bit. You, you talk about blocking kicks and uh, you know, as you mentioned, Sam, not a lot of ego. Is there, I don't know, another element of this game that you'll be watching for from Nebraska's perspective or, or something that could swing the game? They run Minnesota's offense. So Kirk Sorak is their offensive coordinator. So they ran, they run what Minnesota ran for years. And Minnesota's basically still running it, by the way. But Nebraska doesn't play Minnesota this year. So inside zone, inside zone, outside zone, not a ton of run plays. Then they're going to throw the football off of that. They want to try to get RPOs and slants and, and things on the inside, and then they'll take some deep shots. So, you know, I think Nebraska knows this the system. It's it's you got to stop it. You, you have to stop their inside and their outside zone game. Common on guy's really good. He's he's hard to find. He's he's a great case study for why I like small running backs. Can't find him. And then all of a sudden he's like a rock and he comes out the other side. And, you know, he's already <laughs> he's already in your trench, so to speak. You know, and he's right up on you and you, you can't tackle him and you can't necessarily get him, you know. So that's going to be, I think – a key matchup. Nebraska's got to get Rutgers offense off the field. If this is a deal where Rutgers holds it for 35 minutes, I think Rutgers is going to win the game. How about you, Tom? Anything else? I, I again, I, I, when I threw this out there last week. I, I'd like to see more Harburg, especially getting near the, the goal line inside the, the red zone. Um, you know, I don't, it didn't. It ended up be a, have to be some kind of trick play where he throws it back to uh, Raiola, and I don't like lining up Raiola wide. I don't think yeah, <laughs> get him off the field. You don't need to <laughs> even have him on the field. Nobody's fooling anybody. That he's going to be a receiver. I mean, That's right. The only thing that could bad happen there was bad that he somehow gets hurt uh, where he's out of position, or some cornerback comes up and, and tries to you know knock him into the ground. Um, just get him off the field totally. But I'd like to see a Harburg uh, Wildcat or, um, you know, they last year they tried to figure out the option. I think having an option player or two for him would, would, be, would be kind of fun. That that would really throw people off. Um, uh, and the, the option takes work and a lot of work to get it down. But I'm just saying get him out there. And 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 make, and make and make people try to you know he's hard to tackle he he's a, a very crafty runner um, you know throw him a ball throw him a screen pass throw him one of those one of those quick passes out to the and and um, if you if if you know I'm, 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 let him you know I'm, I'm get the uh, defensive back out, out of position or or you know miss a tackle and then he's gone I mean. So I'd like to see him more part of the offense. Um, yeah, I know they have a bye week to get all that stuff down for Indiana, but I think this is good. Again, you know, Washington got in the red zone and couldn't get it in there. I think that 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 is the matchup of the of the week for me is getting in the end zone if you get down there. Um, you know, um, Greg Shiano knows the score. He's seen Nebraska's kick. He would love to have them uh, stop and 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 like have to settle for three or, or try to get three. Um, so, you know, get down in the you know if it's not Harburg, certainly uh, you got three running backs. You know, pound 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 when you get down there, and um, you know you know what what we saw at the. Uh, the 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 fourth quarter last week where they. You know, it was fourth and one, and I was kind of going, "Okay, now they're now they're in trouble." <laughs> what are they gonna do? Of fourth and one, now they're in trouble, and they ran a great running play. Um, 
I, I, I believe it was Dante uh, who scored. Um, yeah. So do that. Yeah. I, I would add, too, I just think I'll be curious to see how the defense builds on the Purdue win coming off of those you know, a little bit shaky, leaky, maybe you and I and, and Illinois games. And it's it just kind of feels like they're close to being whole here midway through the season. I mean, Tommy Hill's probably, I would imagine, uh, going to sit out one more time with the bye week coming up. But Sierra Wright's been really good. We saw Javen Wright at linebacker come back for the first time. John Bullock's playing at a an all-conference level. The defensive line has just kind of done what it does. Like this, to me, this is a game where like, if your defense is what you think it is and you don't have to worry about Rutgers going up over the top of you or really worry about Kaliak Manis being too mobile, like it's about eye discipline. It's about your assignments, your gaps. And like, if you can do that, they have the dudes to execute. This feels like a game to me that the black shirts could flex if they can stay disciplined and, and, and stop it in the sense that you talked about earlier, Sam, too. Yeah, I I agree with you. Zone plays are not easy to for, for over-pursuing defenses to always play right. So we'll see. Like, they're going to try to get those linebackers flowing hard and Manon guys get a cutback. That's what they're going to try to get going. And they're going to try to get the safeties to shoot. And then they're going to they're going to pull the ball. And they're going to throw it. So we'll we'll see what they do. I mean, Illinois put a plan out there, and Rutgers is going to try to execute the same thing. It, it's really not about Nebraska's toughness. Nebraska's tough. Mm-hmm. They are tough as heck, but they play really aggressive. And sometimes when you play that way, you you can you can get going this way, and you're coming back the other way, and whatever. Like their goal in life is to shut down other teams' run defenses. Whereas, like I'll give you an example, Bo Pelini was comfortable with giving up 120, 130. He was running what you would basically call a match quarters pass defense too, where it was match underneath, safety's deep, everything's closed. And he was comfortable with giving up 100 and 150. Sometimes they gave up 450. The point being that, like, Nebraska's defenses want to do any of that with the run game. They want to stuff it. And sometimes you you can get guys going one way and you come back the other and stuff like that. So Nebraska plays super hard. It's... I it's discipline's really important and watching where that running back goes. I I'm I'm looking forward to the game. I am, because I think it's going to be a really interesting test for Tony White and his and his crew. I think Nebraska will put 21, 24 on the board. It's just a question of whether Nebraska's defense um can 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 do what it needs to do. Should we go to picks? Oh, I'm gonna talk a little hoops. Actually. Little hoops. Um yep. And then we'll, we can go to picks. Let's do it. Shortly after that. Um, well, we can do the picks first. I know you got to go. If you want to do picks and then Tom and I will talk some hoops, let's do that. Cool? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, let's do it. All right. We don't have as many games this week. Last week was pretty awesome. But where it stands right now is Evan is at 41 and 17, four games ahead of me, and five ahead of Tom. The first one on the list, Mizzou at Texas a and Maybe the best game of the weekend. Uh, Missouri. M I Z. You got time. I'll go Missouri. I I don't feel good about it, but yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going Missouri. It's a good football team. And they you talk about a team that hits. Missouri hits. SMU at Louisville. ACC test for SMU. Okay. Okay. I think Louisville I bounces Ponies. back. What's that? Ponies. Okay. Yep. I go Louisville. Okay, the Ville. I'll go the Ville as well. Iowa, Ohio State. I think it could be close-ish, but yeah. Buckeyes. Yeah, uh, Ohio State. <clears throat> I'm picking Ohio State too, but I don't understand the 21 point line at all. Ole Miss of South Carolina. I'll take the Rebels to rebound. Yeah. Same. Tennessee and Arkansas. Toughest test maybe for Tennessee this far. Because Oklahoma's offense can't score. I still think the Vols roll. Okay. I'm going to take Arkansas. I'm I'm crazy, but um, these things happen. You. 
Helmet game. I love Tennessee's helmet. I love Arkansas's helmet. Yeah. Michigan, Washington. I've already given away my pick. I'm picking Washington. I I, I can't do it until I see it. I got to go Michigan. All right. I'll I'll, I'll go with the uh, the boats on Lake Washington. I think it's uh, it'll, it'll, it'll be a fine day to be tailgating out on the uh, out on the water and. Um, you know, Michigan's especially after last week's close call. Uh, but I'd be a little full of themselves. I don't know. Um, I'll go Huskies. I'm with you. Syracuse at UNLV. It's a college football playoff game now. Like it's a knockout game for UNLV. Um, at UNLV. Yeah, last week's mess has has has, has, has now settled down. The the backup quarterback. Came in and did well. He was a six-year senior, by the way. Um, I thought I'll take the Rebels. Same. UNLV. Deuce. Ooh. Texas Tech at Arizona. Matt Rule's buddy is in uh, Garrett McGuire's dad's having a good season down there in uh, Lubbock. Arizona obviously just beat Utah. It's at Arizona? It is. Yeah, Arizona. Good. Two interesting but flawed teams. I'll go Arizona. Texas Tech. For Utah's two teams. They're 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 one team with that quarterback, and they're another team with the uh, without. And they 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 aren't very good without that. Guy. Purdue at Wisconsin. I'll take Wisconsin. Boy, I, if Wisconsin doesn't win, I don't know. Then they fall <laughs> to the bottom of the glob. Oh, yeah, oh, 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 that AD better check his whole card up there in Madison if they don't beat Purdue. Yeah, I'm going Wisconsin. Okay. Yeah, I, I can't see Purdue winning that game. I'll, I, I don't. It might be ugly, but I'll take Wisconsin. Barry Alvarez. I don't know if you, Tom, if you saw this two days ago. He's a radio show up in Madison, and he just ripped Wisconsin for running out of the shotgun on fourth and one. Who does that? I mean, imagine Tom Osborne. He didn't even do that. Get on the radio and rip Bill Callahan. Oh boy! Well, well Barry Woo! used to Barry used to rip Nebraska for Byron Solich and doing all this crazy stuff. And you know he's watching it at his place. He's watching it happen to him. He texted Brad Nessler as the play happened <laughs> about running out of the shot. I mean, that's the discussion that's going on up there. Not good. Rutgers, Nebraska. I took Nebraska. I changed from the beginning of the season. I would have picked Rutgers then. I think Nebraska's learned a lesson. We'll see. Nebraska. I think Nebraska's better. I think if they play well, they're going to be better. I like their offensive skill people. Um, yes, I, I think um, they've got issues to work out, but uh, I think they'll, they'll, they'll grind out a, a very close win. I'm going to say Nebraska, too. I also preseason picked Rutgers to win the game. I think Nebraska's grown in some ways. I think the matchups actually favor what Nebraska's strengths are. So I agree. I think they win a close one in the heat. None of us have picked against Nebraska yet. Maybe we'll do that after the bye week. I know we'll do it on October 20 for the October 26th game, I think. But we'll seems, see. seems like a good bet. All right. Thanks, Evan, for being with us and for generally hosting. Uh, he's going to go. And Tom and I are going to talk real quickly about hoops. Okay. So, Tom, Nebraska was uh, picked 12th in the preseason poll of the Big Ten media. I rattled off the poll before we uh, before we went on, uh, on air here, but I will rattle it off again. So, Nebraska is tied for 12th with Wisconsin, Purdue, Indiana, UCLA, Illinois, and Michigan State are the top five. Then Dana Altman's Oregon, Rutgers, Ohio State, which got a first place vote, even though it's eighth. Michigan, Maryland, Iowa, Iowa, Wisconsin, Nebraska, USC, Washington, Northwestern, Penn State, and Minnesota. Just yeah, I, I don't have a problem with it because it's um, the Big Ten is you know Nebraska's. Look, I love what Hoiberg has done. He's 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 found an identity and a, a style of, of of recruiting, a style of of um, the portal, getting guys in, and they um, 
the role players um and and the, the kind of the kind of defense they want to play I and now that they got bigger I, I love I think they're they're going to be set every year. They're going to be right in there every year. The Big Ten is a giant glob of 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 uh, whatever. It's between six and seven and twelve or fourteen. I'm in there eighteen now. I can't, can't right. even count. Um, between six and seven and and maybe fourteen or fifteen. It's it's a crapshoot. I mean, and so they're right in the middle of all that. That's how I see them. If people are just trying to put a number on a team, well, who knows how anybody will be right now? You know, Nebraska lost K same, and that's what people see. Yeah, uh, I think you're right. And and so, who's who's going to take his place? Well, not Juwan Gary, and not Bryce Williams. They're they're not those kind of guys. So, but they're good leaders and they're good guys to. I I'm going to build around. I think they're going to have a good team, but I wouldn't pick them high because. But I wouldn't pick Iowa high. I'm not sure who I'd pick high. I'm, I, I don't know. It's um. Oh, I wouldn't pick Iowa high. Either. You're kind of just rounding up the the usual suspects at the top, trying to figure out who the, who from the Pac-12 will be up there, um, and throwing everybody else in the middle. And I think Nebraska's in the middle, and that's fine. So, I think they'll be, they'll be good. Uh, if they if 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 you recruit the guys who can shoot, and it won't just be case a, they'll have maybe two or three options. Um, you know, it's um, the, the point guard. Okay, well, you know, we'll see. Um, it, it's it's um, but again, I, they the, half the battle is knowing how you want to play and who you want to be in that league, and they have they had that figured out. So I like that. They're just going to plug in guys and make sure these guys that they got um, are, are, are the guys they wanted. Or the, you know, they're, they're, they're going to they're going to do their job. So I, I think they'll be on the bubble at the end of the year. They'll win their share. Um, and I, I, I think Fred's offense is going to be is you know, and it'll be interesting to see where it goes with that case. Um, because they they relied on him a lot. Um. But they they also got bigger. They're, they're going to rebound more and and, and 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 maybe play better defense inside. I, I, again, I like them. They're twelfth. That's okay. That 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 just to me, that's easily saying they're seventh. As, as or or maybe fourteenth. We just don't know. So, yeah, that's a good way to put it. I, you know, I don't vote in the poll. Wilson does. We. You can ask Wilson what he did. He's obviously at Big Ten Media Days today. I don't think he voted him 12. I, I I think it's just more of a brand name recognition because there's – I think you're exactly right. Somebody was like, well, they lost Casey, so they must not be very good this year. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, I mean – Well, on paper, I think Nebraska's – on paper, on just on paper, I think Nebraska's a better team this year. On paper. Now, we don't know about the chemistry, but – I, I don't. I can't. I, is the guy from Wisconsin going to make shots? I, I don't. I can't say. Here's what I think. That's you right. Have yep. 18, 18 schools. You, you, you shouldn't do even do a poll. I mean, think it, it doesn't mean anything. It means right. nothing. I mean, when you have eight, it was the big eight. Okay, you got you got to put a lot of thought into it. Okay, four and five are really a big deal. And this thing, there's eighteen. Yeah, I mean, how the hell do you know what to do? I mean, there's too many of them. I mean, they all look alike. They all look alike. That's so, a good point. I mean, I, they shouldn't even do a poll, but, but they have to, and that's fine. But I mean, so I, I, I don't pay too much attention to it because everybody's in there. And Nebraska could be in the top six or seven by the end. Maybe. Why not? Um, if everything goes right. I don't think there's a dominant team in the league. I, th- I think I think I'm sure these guys are going to reload. Uh, Michigan State, they they love the fiddler. Um, Illinois, is Illinois, Indiana up there. Okay, yes. They, maybe they had a great year in the portal. Maybe they did. They added a good player. They there last year, they were ended last year being very upset about losing to Nebraska three times. So 
<laughs> they were very upset at uh, their coach. Um, I don't know. But I, um, 18 teams, it's, that's that's more than two big eights. <laughs> it's, 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 it's like, okay, how do you do this? I don't know. I, I used to think 12 was too much. <laughs> it's 18. Yeah. Imagine what it's going to be like when it's 20. <laughs> how do you do that, Paul? That'll be two 10 team divisions. <laughs> That's what I think. I think it'll be oh, two 10 team divisions when yep. they go to 20. Um, basketball and football. Um, yeah, I, I just, I, I just found that in, intriguing, and and I'm not sure. Like, I've looked at the. Here's one of the things that I think, and this will be the last thing I say. Fred Port, uh, Fred Portal. He is Fred Portal. Fred Hoiberg clearly has a methodology about how he wants to recruit the portal. Now that Matt Albemassi is not there, he wants to put guys in place that are old and have a specific skill set that fit into his overall vision. And you can see how he's putting it together. Some of these other teams, when they add from the portal, they're just adding a lot of great dudes. Like Michigan added a lot of great dudes, but a lot of them are the same size. Yeah. And I don't know how they're all going to play together because so many of them do some of the same things. And so UCLA, great portal. They did a great job in the portal. How well are they going to mesh? Because UCLA is considered one of the best teams in the league. Um, those are the big questions is like which team manages the portal the right way. And then you have Purdue and Purdue does it through the high schools. They don't do a lot of portal guys. Wisconsin doesn't do a lot of portaling. Um, but I just feel like Fred Hoiberg is a little ahead of the curve and how he manages the portal versus some of these other teams. Indiana has great individual players, but they do not necessarily fit with the overall core. Here's the thing that, that I think uh, what we found out over the last few years Um Fred Hoiberg is a much better general manager than Abdel Nasser yes. ever was. Abdel Nasser was in charge of getting players when they started. He was the general manager, right? That was his title. Um, and, you know, he was in charge of, of getting the, uh, the the groceries, so to speak. Well, um, I don't know who did it at Iowa State, but I do know Fred was in um, – uh, you know, very good jobs with the uh, Timberwolves um, in the front office of an NBA team. He's got an eye for talent. He knows, and he's the head coach. I feel like he just said, Apple Nassie, you go get the players and I'll coach them. Um, but he didn't like to recruit very much. But, well, that's, he's a better eye for talent. So I think it's a better uh, – Everything's better now because he's in charge of going out and, and you know, seeing the players. Um, and, you know, he knows what he wants. And, again, he, he knows who – especially go, all, all, all kind of guys in the portal. And I think he likes coaching older guys too. Um, maybe that's part of that NBA thing. Um, but in, in the portal, you can get older guys, and he, he, he has a good eye for that as well. Uh, he's been great with that. I mean, everybody they brought in has really fit. They're, you know, there haven't been a lot of problems. Um, there, there's, there's been a lot of chemistry. And it's, um, you know, you, you, you look at a couple of years ago, the guys they brought in, um, including Gary, just great fits. And they all yes. fit together. Um, so, yeah, I think he's better in charge of all that. And, and, and that's what we're getting now. I completely agree. He's done a nice job of putting together the last two teams. Uh, they changed the mid court. They changed the court at PBA. They got rid of the Nebraska State. What do you think? Of that? Yeah, I, I missed being able to you know make a shot from Alliance or Auburn. You know, you could you know I used to write, oh yeah, so and so made a shot from uh, you know wherever. You know, I used to I used to pick a spot in the state, and um, so I missed that. I think, yeah. It's, it reminds me of the NCAA tournament now. Everything's boring. Everything's generic. Everything's a formula. Um, yeah, the block in. Okay. I, I, I'd been better if they just put an 1890 in the middle of it or something. I don't know. I'm just, you know, not the block in. Um, but, um, you know, um, I like what, what you know hockey's doing this uh, weekend. They're going to put Mike Kemp's name in the center ice. 
Well, we put somebody's name on like center court. I don't know who that would be um, at Nebraska, but um, I don't know. It's um, Moiba. What do you think? What do you think um, uh, uh, Greg Sankey and uh, uh, Tony Patini are going to be up to this week in Nashville, and I, we're not just going to be eating hot chicken. What, right. what are they? What, 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 what's the purpose of the Big Ten and the SEC getting together? They want four automatic bids for both leagues, no no questions asked, and uh, you're probably going to see a conversation about the uh, the hosting thing because I I think there's going to be a situation brewing in the Big Twelve where you have a number four seed hosting a game, and it's kind of like the NFL where yeah. they really shouldn't be hosting. So, and the right. one thing you don't want to see happen is you don't want to see the four seed get its get. Its, it's tail kicked every single year because it's an inferior program to the five seed. The five seed, for example, this year could very well be Georgia mm-hmm. going to Iowa state. Now that makes for a cool visual yeah. at kickoff. <laughs> it's not going to make for a cool visual at the end of the game. Like it's <laughs> that, that will render the league championship game. If they do away with that automatic thing, the league championship games will mean nothing uh, right. in a lot of ways, and uh, I'm I'm okay with that. I've championship games are have been okay. A lot of them have been boring. Uh, some have been good, um, but not many. Uh, that weekend might be better served in some other way. Um, yeah, where they play all the, all the league championship games, and I hate to say that because that means. Winning league championship doesn't mean as much, but it's not going away anyway. Uh, the only thing, really, really, I guess, putting any value on it is being able to say you're uh, one of the top seeds and you and, and, and you, you, you get a buy. But yeah. um, well, uh, what's interesting is that at this point, you don't actually need a league championship game to get one of the buys because the league can declare its champion. Yeah. And so, yeah. Anyway, I think the Big Ten and the SEC are going to try to lock up four and that's fine i think what i mean they don't get their time, i think they're going to get four this year anyway but they can do what they want i mean what what if they try to change the home fields and that they, they don't get their way it's a good what question would they pull out and become just a two-team <laughs> college football sport I- I had this talk. I was at a function last night, and these fans were talking about this new uh, college football, whatever it's called, players as a group or something. I don't even know the name of it, but it's the uh, the top seventy schools would born would bond together, and they'd have they'd break into little groups of eight divisions, and it would be like. You know, it would be all regional, and people were loving it, and they've all fired up. Nebraska would be – and actually, the one I saw, they wouldn't be in the old Big 8. They'd still be in the Big 10. But it would be like divisions of eight schools uh, in this big 70, um, 70 uh, team, you know, conference, super conference. And I just told people, hey – why would the SEC and the Big Ten agree to this? Does that mean everybody gets the same money? Why did why would they give up the, the leverage they have that they've worked for? And also, why would the SEC and the Big Ten want to stop being the SEC and the Big Ten? With all that history and tradition, right? I mean, who's imagine being the co- commissioner who has to tell the, the fans of the SEC, oh, we're not the SEC anymore. It's, it's all gone. You know how much that means. Those people it means everything. So, yeah. I don't. I don't see that ever happening. No. And then I saw Greg Sankey's quote, basically saying the same thing. Um, you know, why would I come down? He said, "Why would I dumb down the SEC?" <laughs> that was a great line. So, um, people were talking about that this week. Uh, Big Ten SEC, all kind of theories. But uh, I, I just wanted to throw that out there. No, I think that's 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 accurate. I I'll be curious to see how the playoff unfolds this year. I I don't anticipate one more than one Big Twelve team making it because I think the only undefeated Big Twelve team left is is Iowa State. So well, they're not. What's happening? What's happening is is uh, 
is, is well, what what's unfolding is what I thought, and that's they're all going to beat each other up. Yeah, but I don't know who's going to beat Iowa State. Maybe Utah. The, 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 they don't play uh, one of the top teams in that way. I don't. That, they play K State at home. Um, I can't figure them out either. But um, K State's a good team. They're they're good. They're a good team. The um, yeah, oh, they're team. good. I um, the, the, the BYU game. Maybe I was just a going to BYU uh, type of deal, but um, yeah, I'll tell you what. They, see controversy. They do, they do avoid a lot of the toughest opponents. It's that's accurate. <laughs> I, I I don't think this will happen, but you want controversy in the Bay Twelve? Uh, have Colorado um, win out? Yeah, and, and go to the championship game and lose. And not getting the playoff. Um, the Dion, you know, oh my God, that'll be incredible. So, right. Um, <laughs> That's going to be, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I think they're probably eight and four or seven and five, but so let's right. just say Iowa State is, so Iowa State is going to play for the Big 12 title, but they got to play somebody. And if that team beats them, Iowa State's not going. Like it's, I agree. There's no way that they're going to – I just don't think they're going to get through the season undefeated. And then you have um, the ACC, and, and that that's a one – that's Miami and Clemson and whoever wins that game probably. Yeah. That's, and those – you know, Miami's a, an enjoyable team to watch. I, I don't think they're in the same class as Ohio State and and uh, Alabama and Georgia, but – or Texas. <laughs> so, but we'll see. I don't know. Um Texas always manages to lose one game a year and stupidly. So they'll find a way to do that again. Well, they'll probably beat Oklahoma, but they got Georgia the next week at home. Yeah. Um, yep. Then that could be a knockout game for Georgia. So yeah. we'll see. It's going to be fun. And college football is going to get a, to be a lot of fun here real soon. So I agree. All right. For Tom, I'm Sam. Thanks for listening to the Pick Six Podcast.